Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Church at the studios of SSC Live TV with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining us as we continue what we began on Monday, this thought about what can righteous people do about the violence that has engulfed our nation. Now, this means something very specific to me because here in Louisville, we've had an epidemic of violence. Last year in 2020, we had the largest homicide in the history of our city. And now already this year, halfway through the year, we are poised to have even a greater homicide rate. And what we're experiencing here in Louisville is minuscule compared to what's taking place in some of the larger cities. Now, anytime that you're having this problem all across the country, that means that we're dealing with something very systemic, something that needs to be addressed. And like we said yesterday, the problem with violence is that it targets black males. It creates a tone of terrorism in our community. And so both the victims and the perpetrators, uh, their lives are destroyed. Of course, the victim is dead, families are grieving, and the perpetrator finds himself incarcerated for the balance of their life. We have got to address this. And the wonderful thing about uh, this issue, the good thing about the issue is that the Bible speaks about it, gives us both causes and cures for the violence. Psalm 11, is, it's about homicides. And this writer says in Psalm 11, verse 1, I've already run for my dear life straight to the arms of God. So why would I run away now when you say, stop here, listen to this, when you say run to the mountains. So someone is telling this particular person that he needs to flee the violence that has engulfed his community. And instead of fleeing it, he is faithing it. Don't flee it, faith it. Notice what he says. He says, I'm not fleeing to the mountains because I've already fled to the arms of God. Look at verse two. Verse 2 says, the evil bows are bent. So it's a weapon. The bow is bent. The, the, the bullet's in the chamber. The arrow is in the bowstring. The bow is bent, aimed to shoot under, under cover of darkness at every heart open to God. The bottom dropped out. You ever feel like that, that the bottom has just dropped out? You're in free fall. Our society's in free fall. The bottom's dropped out of the country. Good people, and here's the cause of violence, good people don't have a chance. If we want to, to fix violence in our city, we've got to give people opportunities. We've got to give people chances. Verse 4 says, but God hasn't moved to the mountains. His holy address hasn't changed. He's in charge. It's his eyes taking everything in his, in his eyelids, unblinking, examining Adam's unruly brood, not missing a thing. What can we do about the violence? So if violence has engulfed every major urban area in America, from Louisville to Newark to Detroit to, of course, Chicago, then we're not simply dealing uh, with individual behavior. We're dealing with systems and structures, which is helping to create these individual behaviors. So what can we do about it? You know, as the twig is bent, so grows the tree. And as a child is bent, so grows the child into an adult. How can we arrest this before the child becomes hopeless and full of despair? Well, we have to build and reconstitute institutions in our community that is teaching new views and new values. And one of the critical institutions that can help do that is the church. One of the challenges that many young people are facing today is the absence of institutions in their communities that are giving them a moral compass so they will know right from wrong. Many of these kids are growing up in communities in which they don't have not simply role models, but real models. And then when they do aspire to become somebody, they don't have the paths to get there. They don't always have the resources. There is such a tremendous wealth gap in our society. Um, 
in the haves and the have-nots. And most of the violence is taking place in low opportunity communities. So how can we fix the violence? We fix the violence by providing opportunities. Notice in this psalm that's talking about justice, talking about violence rather, that the word justice is used in verse says in verse 7 it says for the righteous lord loves justice simply this equitable opportunities so that if we're supposed to be a democratic society that means that everybody has opportunities and and access to the good things in life america is the wealthiest country in the world in fact it's the wealthiest country in the history of the world but the problem is, is that America also has the largest wealth gap in the history of the, well, in the world. There's such a calcification of wealth at the top that never comes down to those who are in poor urban communities. We love to talk about people who have beat the odds. But instead of talking about people who beat the odds, why don't we do something to help reduce the odds by giving everyone equal opportunities. The church can be one of those institutions that can provide it. We can help with socialization. We can help provide the mentors and the models. We can empower youth. In fact, youth to a world that they've never seen before so they can dream new dreams and that they can aspire. Always remember that God is a God of justice. I would highly recommend that one thing we do not do and that is to shame, blame those who are really the victims of violence, or those who are the victims of living in low opportunity communities. We need to speak truth to power, to make sure that instead of calcifying all the wealth at the top, that wealth is flowing to those who are at the bottom so that they will also have opportunities. You know, if you study World War II, you remember that uh, when the Germans invaded Poland, that they segregated the Jews off into ghettos in Warsaw. And according to the data, there was a lot of violence and crime in these Jewish ghettos. But when the war was over with, they had a trial for all of the Nazis who had committed crimes against humanity. It was called the Nuremberg Trials. And not one person who was a Jew, who may have committed a crime, maybe even committed murder in the ghettos of Warsaw. Not one person was tried at Nuremberg. Instead, it was those who created the systems that made violence conducive, that made the violence possible. So it was, it was, it was Kittel who was the head of the German army. It was Hermann Goring. It was um, uh, Hitler's armistice mass minister, uh, Albert Speer, they were put on trial because they knew that they are the ones who orchestrated and engineered the circumstances that created the violence. You want to get rid of the violence? Let's create new community circumstances, new social infrastructures that give all opportunity because God is a God of justice. If we can do that, then we can take the arrow out of the bow and we can find some peace and some justice and our communities will be revitalized. Our communities will be placed where commerce takes place and jobs are plentiful and uh, people will study war no more. The church is not called to flee it. The church is called to faith it. And if we can faith it, I think we can make a tremendous difference and we can reduce the carnage of death and violence that has engulfed our community. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the study. And uh, we have been challenged with Psalm 11. Uh, we are disturbed about the violence because even though we have not perhaps been personally affected by it, many of us, um, we know that we too are vulnerable, that if it can happen to anyone, it can happen to everyone. So help us, O oh Lord, to create a more just community and cities and states where there is opportunity, that is abundant opportunity for all people. 
We ask your blessings upon those who are the victims of violence, those who are grieving, those who have given up hope. Lord, thank you that you have not fled to the mountain, that you are in your holy temple and that you are truly in control. Bless every person who's been with me this entire week on this journey through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank you so very much for being with me for another powerful point uh, to ponder. Look, everyone needs a church home. Everyone needs a church home. So if you don't have a church home, we'd like to encourage you to contact us here at St. Stephen Church. New Start, email us, newstart at ssclive.org. We get back with you. Tomorrow is the Lord's Day, and it's a special day on the day of St. We'll celebrate our 95th church anniversary. The Reverend Dr. A. Russell Alcott, who is one of my favorite preachers of all time, will be the guest preacher. And you're going to be blessed, I assure you, by the message that Dr. Alcott is going to bring as we celebrate 95 years. And once the worship is over with, uh, we're going to gather in the parking lot with some music and DJs and our cars and do a little fellowshipping and socializing in a response way because we realize that COVID-19 is still yet among us. But we do hope you'll come out to the picnic, uh, if you will, in, in the parking lot at the conclusion of service uh, tomorrow morning. God bless you. Thank you so very much again for being with me for another powerful point to ponder. Hope you have a blessed day all day today. And until we meet again, don't forget that during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. See you tomorrow.